the very last word of this wonderful piece, um, Ewiglich, it's, it's, it comprises Ewig and then the suffix Lich. Now, Ewig is pronounced in German Ewig. So at the end of Mahler's Das Lied von der Erde, it comes again and again, Ewig, Ewig. But actually, when it's um, combined with Lich, it, it, it really ought to be Ewig Lich and not Ewig Lich. You can see why it's it's a matter of euphony. I think two it doesn't work very well. So, so it should be ewig, ewiglich. And then there's the a umlaut that often provides problems. Um, has to be quite open. Er wege, um, uh, and gefäße from the. Um, Evangelist, uh, schlägest du mich? Warum schlägest du mich? So it has to be more open than you think. And then there's the R. Germans are very fond of their R. And so if you have Herz and Schmerz, I think a lot of singers um, hide it because it's perhaps easier. But if you've got time, it should certainly be Herz and Schmerz. And then very simple things like Zs, they must have a T in front of them, so Zeit. All these things I think choirs need to be reminded of. This choir is extraordinary though, I mean it's wonderful. So anything I say doesn't necessarily apply to this choir. They're very quick and very experienced. But you know, you, you can help with all sorts of things, not just pronunciation. Um, I mean double consonants is another um, pronunciation problem. That wonderful line, macht mir den Himmel auf. And how does it go? And schließ die Hölle zu. Hölle. Your tongue has to linger on the double L. And while we're on that, that, that leads, leads me into not just pronunciation but color because you don't have to color. Himmel, heaven, it's bright and light, and Hölle is dark and threatening. Um, and there are lots of ways you can. You can color words. Uh, EI, for example, schreiben. You've got that rather threatening line, schreibe nicht. Well, if you elongate it, if you elasticate it, it sounds actually far more threatening in that context. And also, I mean, so one or two examples here, I'll say deep, gefangen, you know, um, captured as a thief. If you simply say, I'll say deep, gefangen, that's perfectly correct. That's pr correct pronunciation. But within the context of the drama, and I think the John Passion is so dramatic, I mean more dramatic than the Matthew, you have to attend to these things. So deep, deep, elongated. And then it ends, ich will dich preisen ewig, ewiglich. Well, you could do ich will dich preisen, but actually ich will dich, ich will dich preisen ewiglich. And you've got a much brighter sound. I have no idea whether this is the norm for, for recordings and for preparing for a, a big concert like we had in the Barbican. But it seems to be a good thing. Um, I mean, I coach a lot of singers, not just students, but, you know, singers who have a reputation. And if you sometimes feel that they, although they pronounce it correctly, that they don't understand syntax, which happens again and again. They're very good parrots. Um, and if you ask them to um, recite the poem, sometimes the whole edifice crumbles. Um, I mean, Hugo Wolf very often used to ask the singer to um, recite the poem before singing it. I think that's rather a good idea. <laughs> um, but your question, yes, I mean, the, the, the words are crucially important, and I think they are sometimes um, not attended to in, 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 in Bach, because it's regarded as melismatic and not quite the same as the 19th century lit. So I think it's really quite refreshing that um, the Academy of Ancient Music have, have bothered to do this. I, I just hope it helps. But you know, you're, it's a difficult job because, look, you, you have a, you want them to get a certain color. And 
how do you do that? It's a bit like wine tasting. You, you, you try and describe it. You describe it in a very personal way. And there's this wonderful passage Richard had, you know, the Leap Engel line. Um, I'll just get the... Yes, Ach Herr, lass dein Leap Engel line. And he was saying, well, imagine the angel on top of the Christmas tree. It was a really nice thing to have said. And, you know, it's light and bright. And then I think I said later, well, or um, imagine a Della Robbia uh, terracotta angel thing. And then it suddenly occurred to me, God, they must think I'm very pretentious. But you've got to, you've got to try and find um, personal ways of conveying the sort of color that you're looking for. I mean, blut, for example, this wonderful word blut, this coagulating sound, um, deep and dark, blut. Um, I found myself saying, well, listen to Act 3 of Wozzeck, where Marguerite um, sees the blood on his arm and says blut, and then the sopranos, and then the mezzos, and then the tenors, and the, the, the baritones, the, the basses, they all say it. It's very threatening. If you listen to it in, that, uh, in any performance, blut, you'll get an idea of the colour that I was looking for there. But again, you know, people might say, you know, here he goes again, showing off or whatever, but it really isn't that. It's, it's just trying to, trying to find images. You know, Schubert's visual imagination, he finds uh, tonal visual equivalents for certain words, and he will, um, I mean, obvious ones in Schubert is, is, is the river, you've got these semi-quavers, but um, all through you, you, you've got ways of him illustrating things in the text. It's quite astonishing what he does. I think Bach is equally wonderful in, 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 that, in that regard. Um, and so therefore it's actually really important when you're singing Weinete on that melisma that you, you actually, it's almost onomatopoeic. Uh, that's a pretty obvious example, but um, lots of examples where he, um, I mean, alliterative clusters, for example, um, where he uses alliteration. I mean, he partly uses it, like Wagner uses it, to um, enhance intelligibility. I mean, Wagner is particularly important because the, the orchestra is much bigger and, and hearing is more of a problem. but. You know, clusters of um, certain letters, alliterative clusters, really help you to, the audience, to, to understand. And, you know, there are lots of examples. Gib uns Geduld in Leiden's Zeit. So a choir might initially just sing Gib uns Geduld, but actually Gib uns Geduld in Leiden's Zeit. And it comes over, you know, more urgently. And um, Liz's aria we're about to hear. Ich folge, ich folge dir gleichfalls mit freudigen Schritten. <laughs> and I think if you do attend to that, I mean not crassly, but just intelligently, it does come over far more, far more tellingly. I mean there are singers with wonderful voices, and I can't name them here, who never ever move me, um, because they don't do anything with text. They have the most beautiful voice in the world. I can think of two sopranos. Uh, but they never ever move me because they don't inhabit text. They don't get behind the text. And so, but th these do, I mean, Liz is extraordinary. And you listen to her, the way she, she says that. And then, wir haben keinen König, denn der Kaiser. We were working with that at the choir. And, you know, they think quite rightly that they are hitting those cases, and indeed they are, but you can sometimes give more, and the pace that Richard was taking at it, taking it, at, it became very, very exciting. And all you're doing is say, look, please just hit those cases more, and you know, they could either shrug their shoulders and say they've been told that many, many times before, <laughs> or you, you can just try and make them do it, and sometimes it works, and when it works, it's wonderful. And that is a very exciting. We have keinen Kaiser, denn der König. It, it was actually electric yesterday. So that sort of makes your job worthwhile. There's a lot of hanging around to do in this job. I mean, a lot of the time, 
you know, you've, you've worked with the choir and, uh, and the individuals, um, these wonderful singers. And then, of course, for the recording purposes, you've got to go over it again and again and again, not for textual reasons, you know, for rhythmic reasons, for musical reasons, for balance reasons. And so, therefore, you are, you, you are basically out of work for a lot of the time, sitting at the back. Although I don't like sitting at the back, I actually like to be near the orchestra and to give notes, not from the, not from the uh, recording room where I think it's traditional, but actually I think it's important just to, to look at them, 